Hey everyone, Docwell here, and welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be about patch 7.32. It just came out yesterday, and pretty much unlike every patch we've had for the last year, this one's actually pretty good. Now, it's not huge and revolutionary because it is coming before TI, so I don't think they even should do a huge, like, revolutionary patch, but it is significant. They do change a lot of actual relevant things where we used to have patches or we did have a patch that changed like neutral creeps but it actually didn't really do anything other than change two neutral creeps and make them op and then they immediately nerfed them so we've had patches that seemed to be big in the last year or so but it just you know they really didn't do anything now we have some map changes we have some significant changes the one thing I will say about this patch that I'm not happy with, which I'll get into, is they still do this weird thing with hero changes where they're buffing heroes that are already good, and they're nerfing heroes that are all, like, currently terrible, and it just makes no sense sometimes, and then they do this weird, like, half buff, half nerf thing to some heroes. I just don't understand why they do this sometimes. It's really weird. I'll mention all of those as we go through it, but just like every other video form, patches, that I do, I'm going to summarize pretty much everything. I'm not going to get into, like, the weeds. I'm not going to get into every little change. I'm just going to give you the broad generalization, the summary of how it's going to affect the game overall and uh, hopefully make this a little bit of a shorter video. If you want the details, you can obviously go to some other people's uh, videos, other people's streams, like Purge and such, but that's pretty much how I do it. So, without further delay, let's get into the general changes. So, first off, we have Primal Beast added to Captain's Mode. Primal Beast was OP, then they nerfed him. They didn't change too much about him in this patch, so we'll see if he gets picked. Um, sometimes once they get added to Captain's Mode, the uh, the pro players rediscover the hero. I think that kind of happened to Marcy and to Dawnbreaker, especially Dawnbreaker. I think Dawnbreaker is like super OP. I think it's still OP in this patch, but it was kind of not played that much until it entered into Captain's Mode. Had some buffs as well, but it got into Captain's Mode and now it's like super good. Um, so we'll see what happens to Primal Beast. I think he still has some ways that he can be pretty good. I think the biggest nerf that happened to him actually was that you can now hear him charge in. Like, you, you can hear when he's going to charge, like, even if he's off screen, which is huge, because, like, I actually played against Primal Beast in this patch now, because someone was picking him, and it's, like, so easy. I can just hear him about the charge, and I just BKB before he even gets there, and it's just, like, super easy, especially later in the game. Um, but anyway, Primal Beast added to Captain's Mode. We'll see if he gets picked up. He wasn't buffed too much, um, so we'll see what happens with him. Then we have some general changes, like uh, changing the XP required per level. So basically, they made it so you have to have more XP for each level, so slowing down the level growth a little bit. At max level at 30, uh, it's 500 extra XP, which isn't a ton, but it does slow the game down a little bit, which is pretty good. I think people were kind of getting to level 30 and even 25 super quick, which is kind of interesting. I mean... Uh, overall, we don't really want to have longer games because longer games can be annoying, but I think it has been needed. Like, there's been a lot of buffs to a lot of things over time here, and it just feels like the game is so quick right now. Like, things just happen so fast. It's kind of good to get it a little bit slower. They've also removed some gold from the map, which we'll uh, take a look at. And so I think it's just slowing the game down just slightly, which is good. Um, same thing with the rescaled experience. I'm not going to go into this exactly. It's just a little bit uh, different, not huge. I don't think... There's too much to worry about there. I wouldn't really pay attention. It's more that it takes more experience to level up. So you're just going to be lower level in general uh, at the same amount of time with the same amount of exp uh, XP. And that's pretty much that. This next change here, the Flag Bearer Creep, is a pretty interesting change. I was worried that it was going to be kind of like too big. Uh, that it was going to be too much of like an extra thing to do in the lane. But it actually is just kind of minor, but it is interesting. Gives you kind of another objective during laning, which is even... You know, laning is already complicated. This just makes it even more complicated. So basically, the flag bearer creep, starting at two minutes, and basically every other wave, uh, is one of the melee creeps is now a flag bearer creep. So it pretty much looks the same as a melee creep. It just has like a little circle around it and a flag, and basically has magic resistance, and it also gives regen to all allies in 700 range. And then if you kill the flag bearer, it grants you and every ally within 1200 radius, uh, an extra last hit of a melee creep, basically. So when you last hit that creep, you essentially get two last hits. And your support, if you're laning, you know, in the side lanes, your support, if the support is in 1200 range, gets that gold as well, gets that last hit as well, which is really interesting. They also can't be denied, um, and it doesn't grant, grant gold on deny, so, like, um, the enemy can't get it and that kind of stuff, or if you uh, are denying the enemy's creep, it's like, it doesn't really work like that. It's only 
uh, for lasted. So it just makes it a little bit extra of an objective. So like in lanes, typically you have fighting for the rain tree because the rain tree gives more gold, but it really gives more experience. And that's the important part. Now you're going to have every second wave starting at two minutes. You're going to have this flag bearer creep that is really important to last it like it's going to be super important for you to get that because it gives you just an extra last it in the lane extra gold especially if you're with your support it also makes it kind of interesting because if you're playing mid uh, i played a game of lena it's kind of interesting because you can't just like nuke out the wave when this creep is in it because of that 40 percent magic resistance so it's kind of like a catapult in that way you actually have to click it down uh, and then kind of you can nuke it out at the very end. So that's just an extra added thing. You can't just like throw your spells. You actually have to click it. So for someone like Zeus, maybe that's interesting. I mean, Lena, it's not as important because you can click pretty fast, but like some of these heroes that use magic to uh, clear the wave, like a Storm Spirit, like a Leshrac, it can just add, make it a little bit harder when you have that Flag Bearer creep in there, but it also just makes it more important to try to get that. So I think that's kind of cool. We'll see how that shifts laning a little bit. It is pretty interesting. Um, then the next thing... That we have here is the dire ramp is now deeper in the jungle. Basically, the ramp around Roche and Dire. On the dire side, the ramp near Roche is just back a little bit. Um, if you didn't know, Dire has had a win rate advantage for a little while now. For years, it was uh, Radiant, but now it's actually Dire because of how the um, shape of the jungle and everything is, especially in the safe lane jungle of Dire. You can like stack all those camps a lot easier. It's easier to farm, and you also have a ton of high ground vision at Roche. So. They are kind of adjusting Dire to make it a little bit worse, or at least try to make it a little bit worse, so that the uh, side difference is a little bit more even. So they changed the outpost and the bounty room to adjust for this uh, deeper ramp, and they also reworked the trees around the medium camp there. And so they just changed the map a little bit there, which is in, which is interesting. I think it will make it a little bit worse on Dire's side. And then they... Also made the outpost outpost base teleport channel time increase one second. I'm not sure how relevant that is. It just makes things a little bit worse. It's not super relevant though. Just a little bit worse to like TP to side lanes or to like fight, you know, join team fights when uh, when you're TPing to an outpost. Um, this is the biggest change of the patch, really, right here. Remove small camps near mid lane. So those mid lane small camps that you would always stack and farm, it made mid lane super farm heavy. You could really play a lot of like carry mids um, or carries from the mid lane. Not that you can't still kind of do that, but like in patches, you know, five, six, whatever years ago, there used to be ancients near the mid lane. And then, you know, you'd have TA stack and TA would be really good at farming those. And then you had just, you know, a medium camp that was there, but not like a. Not a small camp. Then I think they changed it to a small camp. There's just all things that have happened to make it like less farmy, but uh, now it's just gone completely. So I think really this is the biggest change of the patch because I think mid lane is now all about two things. It's all about pressuring the tower or ganking. Basically, you're not really going to be straight up farming. Now, you can go into the jungle if you're fast enough and you can get there and get back in time. You can still do that. It's not like it's completely gone. But I think it's going to put a little bit more emphasis on heroes that can dominate lanes they can kind of kick the other hero out because then if they have to leave, it's a lot harder for them to get a little bit of farm and stay near the lane. And then it also emphasizes ganking because of that, because if you can dominate the lane or if you just need to leave, you need to go gank, you need to go help the side lanes. And then also because ganking is better now, it's like, well, because people are going to be leaving their lane more, or even if you do want to go jungle, you're going to be further away from your, uh, your tower. Now it emphasizes pushing the tower. So if the guy leaves, now you have more time potentially to go push the tower. It's not just, it's not like he's just like right there next to the tower farming the small camp and he can just come right over if he sees you clicking the tower. So I think all of those things have changed the mid lane drastically. And with the mid lane changing drastically, the picks are going to change. I think, you know, like I said, lane dominators, tower pushers, gankers, instead of like just farmers, those are going to be big now, which also change, you know, okay, well now the side lanes are going to change because if people are ganking more, people are just pushing towers more, all that stuff is going to change. Maybe roaming is back because, you know, dominating in mid is so important. Kicking people out of lane is so important. There's just can be so many things that this snowball affects in every single lane and the meta and all of that stuff. So this is the biggest change by far, I think, here um, that small camp removed. Next is Glyph of Fortification. This is important um, because basically what used to happen is every time a tier 1 tower fell, you got a refreshed Glyph. Now, every time the first tower of tier 1, tier 2, and tier 3 fall, you get a refreshed Glyph. So you can basically Glyph tier 1, then it falls, then you get a new... Uh, you get a new fort. But if it's the second tier 1 tower to fall, you don't get a new fort. And then it just goes on from there to tier three. This does two things, I think, that are primary things that it changes, which I think are good changes. 
Um, the first one is pretty obvious. Basically, when you're pushing high ground, you don't have a tier three tower yet. You can't just like get a team kill early uh, or mid game and you have like a Luna or like a troll or some kind of hero that does insane damage and just like push the base super quickly and just end the game because they can glyph tier three then that falls, then they can glyph tier four. So it like makes those instant ending of the game kind of situations less likely. It also makes defending high ground a little bit easier. Like you have to be a little bit more strategic about it. And then the other thing that it does, it also makes this like late game scenario where you never took the off lane tier one. It makes that kind of not as relevant anymore because in the past, what would happen is you would take like all the outer towers except for off lanes towers, like the enemy off lane towers. Because they're kind of out of the way, they're really weird, they're the most useless towers in the game, like they don't really do much, they don't protect the map much, they're also usually not near Roche, um, even on the you know, on the uh, Radiant side it's not that big of a deal. Um, so you, sometimes the, that tier 1 on the offlane, the enemy offlane, will just stand there for 30 minutes, and then you never really want to go take it, because if you go take that tier 1, it automatically gives the enemy an extra glyph. So what could happen sometimes is, you win a fight, you're pushing high ground, they glyph. For whatever reason, one of your heroes respawns or some of the mid, like, you know, TPs in with Boots of Travel to the offlane and pushes that tier one tower, kills it. Now they get two glyphs and that can just be weird. It can be weird because one, it can grief you. And then two, it's also just makes it so that there's like a lane just sitting there that nobody wants to take because they get extra, an extra fort. And it just makes that super awkward. That's not a problem anymore. Now you can just, you know, systematically take all the towers. So I think that's going to change how people play the map a little bit. Um... That's that's one thing I think I haven't heard anyone really talk about, but it's mainly I think for the fact that you can't just like go push tier three and then end the game really quick because you get two glyphs, which is very important. So that's the glyph change. Uh, fountain vulnerability, basically just a change to make people uh, not found dive as much. Passive gold decreased. So even though you get this new extra gold from the flag bear creep, you have passive gold decreased. You're gaining less experience, or you're not gaining less, but you need more to get to the max level and. Um, that made that uh, small camp was just completely removed. So they're removing gold from the game, which is really interesting. I think interesting. I think they already kind of decreased the gold given by neutrals in general, like a year or so ago, by fifteen something percent in general, which is interesting. So they've, you know, as things keep getting buffed and buffed, they are starting to remove a little bit of the gold, remove a little bit of the XP, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, make it a little bit slower, so things aren't super overpowered, which I think has happened recently. Ancient armor increased, and then ancient backdoor protection HP regen is increased as well. Just making it so you can't just like end the game super quickly. You can't backdoor nearly as easily either. I mean, I haven't seen this happen recently, but we have seen games from, you know, six months a year ago, whenever it was, where we just had like a IO morphling, you know, TPing in through backdoor protection and just killing the ancient. I just don't think that's going to be happening as much. 10 more army armor and uh, backdoor protection regen. That's a lot. This is probably not going to be a thing anymore. It's just not going to happen as much where you can backdoor the ancient. And I think um, in general, it just makes it a little bit easier to prolong the game with those extra glyphs so that you're not just having this thing where the game suddenly ends and you didn't expect it to. Um, that's the main general changes. But yeah, I think these are all really good changes. I really like all of these changes, um, especially the small camp removed because I think that just changes the game completely, especially from the mid lane and that's going to have snowball effects so now that we understand general changes let's move on to the item changes so now the first item change here is bkb now has 50 mana cost i think this is a great change i really like this they're constantly looking at ways to kind of nerf bkb or make it better in a way where it's not just like this end all be all buy it every game kind of item but it is still very good because obviously bkb it's the best item in the game everyone buys it like all the time especially in pro games it used to be like 10 seconds to 5 seconds. It was super varied. They kind of made it more consistent. Then they nerfed the um, they nerfed the uh, cooldown and all the stuff. Now they're nerfing how much, like basically, can you get it off if you have mana. So heroes like Anti-Major are a little bit better. Any hero that burns mana, even heroes that have low mana cost, if you get stun locked and you have no mana now, for whatever reason, people buy Diffusal, you just can't get BKB off. That is very important. That's like a super important thing, especially against invokers. Anything with mana burn it just makes BKB much worse. And I think this is a great way of changing this item because it's kind of hard to change this item too much. If you change it too much, it will just send the whole game out of whack. This makes it so it's generally the same. 50 mana is really not that much. It's pretty much the same item. It just in certain situations now, you can't just rely on it to uh, to save you when you have no no mana, and that's super important. I really like this change. It just makes the item a little bit worse. So you know, against heroes that mana burn, you might even think about like not 
having BKB or just keeping your stick a little bit later. You know, all that kind of stuff. It just changes the game a lot. Blade Mail buffed. Uh, Bloodstone just buffed because nobody buys this since they changed it. It's like only a Lesh item. I think it's still only a Lesh item. I don't, just don't think that this makes it different. It's just... You're either going to have to make this so OP that it's insane, uh, or you're just going to have to change it again. I think they're just going to have to change this item again, because it just doesn't make sense for, like, any hero other than Lesh. Maybe Pudge, but that's pretty much it. Uh, Dragon Lance changed to be a Belt of Alacrity, Belt of Strength, and a Recipe. It's the same cost, um, just increased attack range and one less agility. The main thing here, though, I think, is that... People used to buy Dragonlance and then disassemble it to use the Ogre Axe for BKB. You just can't do that anymore, basically. And that's the main difference. It's pretty much the same item. You just can't... Uh, once you buy it, you just, like, have it, basically. You're not going to disassemble it for BKB. Maybe there's other disassemble things that I don't see here. But actually, no, there's, it's a recipe now. So before, it was just three items, no recipe. Uh, but now, because it's a recipe, I guess you can't disassemble anyway. So that's the main change here. Not, not too big of a difference, but just no disassembling. Next is Yule's Scepter. Um, they changed this mainly, I think, honestly, because of the Venno change that we'll see in a second. It's not a big deal. I'll just mention the Venno change when we get there, but basically it purges first, then Cyclones later. It's just kind of an interesting change. Fla Falcon Blade buffed, not a big deal. I still think this item's kind of weird and no one's going to buy it, but who knows? Maybe people will buy it. Force Staff buffed because they kept nerfing this item a ton in the past, and now people just, like, don't buy it anymore. Um, so they're buffing Force Staff. They're buffing Glimmer Cape. Uh... Just because these items, I think, have fallen out of favor, people just prefer more offensive items on supports, especially because supports have gotten so much more gold and all this stuff. But now because they're nerfing passive gold, you know, they're taking away a small camp. They're doing all these things. I think Force Staff and Glimmer Cape are going to come back into the meta a little bit. They're also buffing Guardian Greaves. Um, I think later they'll buff Pipe and Mech. So making these support healing items a little bit better as well. Hand of Midas, just a small change, but it's pretty interesting. Basically, if you use it on a neutral creep and there's a neutral item available, it will, like, force a drop to happen, which is pretty cool. I think that's actually kind of cool. If you get a really early Midas at, like, seven minutes or whenever the first neutrals come, you can just automatically get a neutral instantly, which is kind of cool. I think it's not a huge change. It doesn't make the item way amazing or anything like that, but it is pretty cool. Halberd uh, uh, buffed a little bit. Not a huge change. Helm of the Overlord and all the lifesteal. I'm just going to mention this one time um, because this happened to every single lifesteal item, as you can probably see below. Is Basically, they increased the lifesteal overall on heroes, but then they made it 50% of its value on creeps. This is kind of twofold. I think this just makes overall the lifesteal items better in team fighting uh, for heroes that just like to man up and like to have this lifesteal. And it also makes it jungling, at least early on, a little bit worse. Once you have, you know, a few levels, once you're a little tankier, I don't think it's as big of a deal, but it makes, especially early jungling, like buying a Mask of Madness and just going straight to the jungle, that's definitely worse on a hero like Luna or any hero that buys this item. I think the other big thing is Roche. So a hero like Ursa, who buys Morbid Mask, it's just doing like um, almost half as much uh, regen as you used to get before from having a Morbid Mask. So it just makes doing Roche early a lot harder for a lot of the heroes that like to have um, an early Roche because a lot of them require some kind of lifesteal, usually a Morbid Mask, something like that. It just makes it a lot worse. I'm pretty sure the, the value's halved on uh, Roche. Maybe I'm wrong there because it kind of is like a weird hero creep thing, but I'm pretty sure it's a creep and it's half. So that is important. It's kind of like a nerf to Ursa specifically, but in general, that's kind of how it is. Early uh, lifesteal for jungling, not as good, but overall these items are better for team fighting and uh, fighting heroes in general. So that's Home of the Overlord. Uh, Hurricane Pike, cooldown decreased, just a small small buff here. Uh, magic resistance increased for Mage Slayer. Mage Slayer is kind of only just bought a little bit occasionally by disassembling um, Echo Saber. I think this item might just come back into favor, or not back, it never really was in favor. This item might just become more of like a staple, an early game item to get on like a Slark or something like that, because it is, has very good mana regen. 25% magic resistance is a lot. Like that is a significant amount for this kind of item. I think it's really good. It does build into a pretty good late game item. So uh, watch out for Mage Slayer to kind of be this like hidden gem of a, an item that some carries and cores will buy early. Like I said, mask change, mech buffed, uh, more of a mask change, nullifier, slight buffs, not really changed much, but slight buffs, pipe of insight buffed. Like I said, all these support items are buffed. Uh, Radiance burn chance increased, which is 
or mischance increased, which is pretty interesting. Um, slight buff to Radiance. I'm pretty sure Alchemist was the, the only hero buying this. It was more a product of Alchemist rather than Radiance itself. Um, so we'll see if Radiance becomes more of a good farming item for some heroes that like to buy it. And then two big nerfs here for Refresher Orb and Refresher sh uh, Shard. Mana cost from 0 to 200 on Shard, and then the mana cost increased by 50 on Orb, and the cooldown increased as well. These items were really good. Obviously, you had Razor, you had Faceless Void. A lot of heroes loved Refresher the last few patches, and just making it a little bit harder, because a lot of these heroes that bought these Refresher Orbs, you know, they would barely have enough mana to get off their spells. And now, um, especially if you get a Refresher Shard, and you have a Refresher Orb, it's going to be very rare that you're going to be able to do that, like, triple Black Hole, because... With this extra 200 mana cost, man, that's a lot um, when you're already pushing it for how much mana you usually have to get off these spells. So that's a pretty good nerf because these were super popular items. I mean, obviously, you're still going to use this, but uh, it's pretty popular. Satanic, same kind of change. Um, they just they adjusted the numbers a little bit, but the active that, or that you, you know, when you activate it, it's still pretty much the same. Shadow Amulet, they changed this so you can't grief people anymore, basically. once You can't just sit there and just be permanently invis. If you're griefing, it's 15 seconds now before it expires, so that's kind of interesting. Vlad's and Wraith Pack change, similar to all the other lifesteal. And then Wind Waker, same thing with the Yule Scepter. And then Witchblade, just the overall little nerf. This, hero, this uh, item was really good on a lot of intelligence heroes, especially mid, like Puck, like Void Spirit. Um, a lot of heroes like to buy it, so we'll see if this is still going to be meta. I think it is, too. Intelligence is not you know, it's not a crazy nerf, it's just a little bit, so we'll see what happens. I think what's more important is the small camp. I think that's going to determine what heroes are good from the mid lane. So those are the item nerfs. Now let's get into the neutral items. So now neutral item changes here. They removed a bunch of them and they added some other new ones. So the first three tier ones that they added here, Seeds of Serenity, Lance of Pursuit, and the Cult Bracelet. Seeds of Serenity, kind of interesting. You just get health, and then you kind of put a radius down on the ground that heals your allies or whoever's in it. I think this is decent. Not that bad. Can be kind of good. We'll see how actually effective it is in the game. Can be good for, like, pushing and stuff like that. So we'll see how good that is. I think it's okay. Uh, Lance of Pursuit. This is pretty good. You get extra mana, which is always really good. And then you get this passive ability to basically be a Ricky. So whenever you attack somebody from basically behind... Um, you get uh, 15 attack damage, and then the enemy is slowed. So I think this is really, really good. Overall, I think it's a great carry item. It's not great for jungling or anything like that. Um, so a lot of the good carry items early on are good for, like, jungling. So, I mean, you just get mana, which is good. But I think it's mainly because when you attack somebody from behind, if you're, like, an aggressive early game carry that likes to get involved, this is a really, really good item. And then Occult Bracelet. You get stats, always welcome. And then I think this passive is pretty much broken. Uh, basically, every time you get attacked, and this works with neutrals as well, you get uh, 0.5 mana regen up to 5 stacks, and it lasts for 10 seconds. It's kind of like uh, reactive armor from Timber, so think about it like that, except instead of health, you're getting mana. And when you're just sitting in the jungle, if you're a hero that is pretty tanky and relies on mana, like a Timber Saw, like a Bristleback, any kind of tanky hero that doesn't care about getting attacked by neutrals, you just have, like, permanent... Uh, 25 mana, like 2.5 mana regen, 25 mana every 10 seconds. Like, you're getting a ton of mana with this uh, with this bracelet here. And the five stats are also good, too. Like, I think they removed Ocean Heart. What did this give? This just gave five stats and some regen when you were in the river. Like, nobody ever sits in the river. Um, this, you're going to be using it on some heroes. It's just going to be absolutely OP on some heroes and not very good on others. I think this is going to get nerfed or changed. It's kind of a weird item. Not, I don't really like these kind of really niche-specific items that are good on some heroes. But anyway, it's a, all these items are pretty good. I think Seeds of Serenity is the worst, but we'll see. It could be really overpowered for, like, grouping up and taking uh, towers, like Beastmaster or anything like this that gets creeps. So just keep that in mind. They removed Chip Vest, Keen Optic, Ocean Heart. Not really super sad about any of these. Chip Vest was kind of cool. This was good for supports, but like otherwise, whatever. Um, the next tier, they added Eye of the Visor, uh, cast range, plus 25, and then minus 20% max mana. I don't know who's going to really want this item. I mean, I understand cast range is really good, but 20% max mana, man, that's a lot of mana. And most, you know, casters, you know, supports, mid laners, they're not really going to want to have this. I mean, maybe a support will like it, but that just like has a huge mana pool, but you definitely don't want this on a core mid or anything like that because that, you know, you want your mana to farm. It just doesn't feel very good. Uh, Specialist Army, you get stats and damage, which is really good. And then Crack Shot, next attack fires two projectiles um, or two additional targets at uh, within the attack range. It only works on ranged heroes and it doesn't pro uh, proc attack modifiers. It's basically Medusa. So this is a Medusa split shot every 10 seconds um, that doesn't have 
attack modifiers like Medusa doesn't have until, I think, 25. Um, but I think this is really, really good on range shields. This is an OP item. 10 attack damage and 8 all stats plus that extra like little attack every 10 seconds, especially for farming. This is super good on range tiers like Drow or any really any range tier. If you get this item, that's going to be awesome for you um, early game, mid game. Dagger of Ristol. 10 attack speed, really good, and then consuming 100 health for 40 attack damage, which is crazy. Uh, 30 second cooldown, obviously, so you can only use it like kind of once in a team fight. But this is really good for like Huskar, other heroes that don't really care about uh, the consumed health and then just want to get that right click damage in, which is kind of insane. I think this is a really good item on specific heroes. It's kind of one of these things where all these items are really good on like a few heroes, like five heroes max, which is something where it's kind of weird. It's like really specific. I don't really love it, but it is, it's still pretty cool. I mean, they're cool ideas. I just don't know if I love that specificity of items. They also removed Essence Ring, Fey Grenade, and Quicksilver Amulet. Eh, I don't like love neutral items in general. I don't really care too much that they removed those. Um, next one, tier three item, uh, Ogre Seal Totem. 12 strength, then you flop forward. You kind of jump forward twice with a stun. It's pretty simple. You just jump forward in two different areas in the front of you, stunning and kind of leaping. So you kind of use it. You can get over cliffs. It's a little bit of a mobility uh, item and you do some damage and stun. It's pretty simple, interesting. It's kind of a meme, but it is kind of cool. And then they um, change Paladin Sword. Lifesteal now affects creep by 50%, similar to all the other lifesteal. So it's just like a general lifesteal thing they're doing. Then they removed Spider Legs and they removed Leveler, which is interesting. Um, this kind of was a weird item that people just like backpacked and then only used for high ground. And then I'm honestly surprised Spider Legs has still been in the game this long. Like, this item was OP for so long. They did change it and it hasn't been as OP, but I'm kind of glad it's been removed. And then they actually gave put Havoc Hammer back in the game, which is kind of weird. Like, I don't even know why they did that. This item was boring and I don't think anyone like loved it or anything. So, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Whatever. And then they nerfed Ex Machina and Mirror Shield. Um... Mana cost increased and cooldown increased here. So just, these are probably two of the best late game items, uh, neutral items, and they just nerfed them a little bit to make them not as OP. So those are the neutral changes. Now let's move on to the hero changes in the patch. Okay, so for hero changes, I'm not going to go over every single little detail. I'm just kind of going to skip through each hero to say, did they buff it? Did they nerf it? You know, what did they change overall generally? Abaddon, um, this is a weird one because they did decrease the mana cost. So the support is just better in general on this hero. But then the scepter radius is decreased which I don't even know why. Like, yes, this scepter was pretty good. Maybe it's just like a pub thing, low MMR. It was just too OP. I don't know. But it's just really weird that they, they did this. This is kind of the things that I don't like. When Abaddon isn't really getting picked that much, they buff him a little bit, but then they nerf him in another way too. I, I get this is kind of like a support buff and then a core nerf, I guess you could say. But it's just super weird. I hate when they do this kind of thing. If you're going to buff the hero, just buff the hero. If you're going to nerf it, just nerf it. I just don't like when they do this. Alchemist, a good hero right now. Um, now they pretty much just changed the... Agnum Scepter to just give you the buffs, even if you don't give it to yourself, which is interesting. Um, I just think that's like a buff overall to late game Alchemist, which is kind of weird because he was already pretty good. Then they changed the talents a little bit. I don't really like to spend too much time on talents unless there's some kind of crazy thing that they added. And I don't think they, they, I don't think they added anything crazy or removed anything crazy here. I think it's just kind of very similar stuff. I think he's buffed overall though. Um, AA shard now slows attack speed, radius increased, duration decreased, but overall I think, and then the chilling touch slow increased as well. I think overall this hero is better. Um, it is buffed. Having the attack speed and the movement speed slow in the ice vortex and you can like spam these out in a team fight is very, very good. Um, anti-mage, this hero is kind of dog poo right now. It's absolute crap. Uh, but They've kind of been buffing it a little bit now to see if they can get it back into the meta. Anime is just such a weird hero. It just has the same build every game. It just it seems like it's either OP or like absolute dog crap. Um, so the Scepter Blink Fragment mana cross decreased. And the mana cross for Blink decreased. Uh, range rescaled to be better early and a little bit better late. And then the cooldown decreased as well uh, early on. So just a better landing stage, better, better early uh, in general so you can... Afford to put more points into some other spells if you need to, because, you know, the mana burns are really good now. Obviously, the uh, magic resistance is really good, especially early when you're low health. And then counter spell mana cost decreased as well. So just like mana cost decreasing in general, just kind of small buffs to the hero. Arc Warden, they kind of changed Flux, which is really weird. They made the slow worse overall, but then the slow is constantly applied, even if you're standing next to uh, other creeps or heroes, uh, but the damage is only applied if there's no allies nearby. So it's kind of weird. I think this actually makes it better, though, because even though the slow isn't as good, 
Um, the slow is just always there and you can't get away from it really, especially max level. I mean, 35% is pretty good. Um, it, it already feels really annoying level one or two anyway. And like from the mid lane or anywhere, if you're trying to run away from this hero, it's super annoying. He's just like hitting you a bunch and then casting his spark rates on you. I think this is kind of a buff to the hero. Axe, some weird changes for Axe. I don't really know why they did some of these changes. They decreased the strength gain, decreased the agility gain. Um, they did improve the cast point. The slow was increased. Um, so they, they buffed some of these things, but I just don't understand why they do this to this hero. Like, why are they decreasing the strength? This hero's not been picked in pros. It just it makes no sense. Um, they, but they do buff some of these other aspects of it. Cast range increased. They made the shard better. Some of this kind of stuff. But I just don't love that they do this to the hero. It's already not that good. Um, I think general buffs to Axe, but it's kind of annoying that they nerfed it here. Bane, just small changes to talents, not a huge deal. Um, he does, like, get health now when you nightmare somebody. The damage that you're doing in the nightmare, including right clicks, actually heals you. So that's kind of cool, but I don't think that's, like, super relevant. Uh, I mean, that, you can only get that at level 10, so it's, like, kind of weird. Uh, Bat Rider now additionally deals a damage when you apply sticky napalm so that's kind of cool i think that definitely does change up the hero a lot they obviously nerfed st sticky napalm in other ways to account for that you know the radius was decreased made pretty small overall duration decreased damage per stack decreased uh those kinds of things but the fact that it applies damage when you put it on somebody is actually kind of interesting because this is a low cooldown uh, spell low mana cost that you spam constantly it's kind of the core of the hero so we'll see how this changes this guy up uh, that's pretty much it. Shard now, just instead of 50% on attack, it's every second attack. Everyone was saying they should have just done that anyway. Beastmaster, pretty popular hero right now, so they changed it. Cast point improved, barely matters. Slow decreased, super annoying. Uh, boars were super annoying. So now you can also put Call of the Wild, the Hawk stun with Shard. Now you can make it like auto cast, so it just automatically happens, you know, whether it's flying out or stationed to the first uh, object it sees. Less attack speed, and then they also gave it a scepter. I think overall, this hero is relatively similar. I don't think it changed all that much. Obviously, the slow decreased is worse, attack speed worse. So I think it's just some nerfs overall, um, but it, it's not super different. Now they gave the scepter this weird drum ability where you can like hit the drum, and um, each strike deals 110 damage in 600 radius. You can like roar somebody, put a drum down, you hit it, uh, and every uh, every unit under his control for 25 percent of damage dealt to heroes and five percent of damage dealt to creeps uh it's healing him and everybody under his control so you get healed it's kind of, it's just like a weird thing i don't know that anyone's ever gonna buy this like we'll see if it's op or something and you have to see it in game but i just it's super weird like you're gonna roar somebody you're gonna stick a drum down start hitting it i just don't think you're gonna do that Bloodseeker, they nerfed the shard which is the only reason that this hero was good at all but they didn't nerf it a ton just a little bit and then uh they rescaled the uh, max movement speed bonus for thirst nerf that as well and then they changed blood mist to make it a little bit better but it's still crap nobody's gonna buy it it's absolute uh dog shit i, I don't really know why they're nerfing blood seeker he was becoming a little bit popular but he just wasn't that popular so i don't know why they're doing this to this kind of hero i mean he, he he's good i guess but he's just worse now maybe this will make him fall off i don't know bounty hunter uh small buffs here mini stun duration and then i guess this is kind of a big buff we'll see how good this is but basically the shard now allows you to apply shadow walk which is your invisibility to your allies and if you're invis you can apply it to your ally and you have two charges so you can click it and then click it on your ally you can go gank i think this is really cool this might actually make bounty hunter legit especially as a support because now support bounty you can just you know get the shard early and now you have two invis heroes running around it can be super annoying this is kind of cool Brewmaster, they changed Brewmaster, which is really annoying because I think this hero hasn't seen play really that much in the last, like, in, in years almost, and he was finally getting popular. People were finding out that this hero's kind of broken. They can just buy Ags and then go Ags Refresher, and this hero has four Primal Splits. It's kind of cool. And now they just changed the Scepter, so you no longer get two Primal split Splits. Now you get this, like, companion. So basically, you have a permanent primal spit split companion you have one of the brewlings you can just choose choose which one you want to be with you at all times uh and then basically if it gets attacked or silenced you can't like change it instantly so it's not like um it's kind of like i guess you could say sort of like uh, lone druid bear it works a little bit like that in some kind of ways uh with like the teleport and stuff but basically you just have this brewling with you all the time and then if it dies it goes on cooldown and you can change it up but not if it's silenced or attacked or that kind of stuff it also has like uh what it's there's something about it where it's like not as good or something like that um yeah all brewling's abilities have double the cooldown when summoned so 
it's not as good. I just don't, I don't know if this is good. I mean, we'll see if it's good. It, it you know, the thing is, this could be pretty good because you could still buy it and permanently have the, uh, the water, the, you know, whatever the panda is, that's the, the blue panda with the cyclone. You could just permanently have that and just cyclone people up in the air, like constantly. That would be insane. Cause that's like the most powerful panda. Obviously the green one has a stun too, but the, the cyclone is the thing that's OP because you can cyclone the, the most important hero in the fight. And then you just like win the fight. So we'll see if that's good. Cause you can have it like 24 seven. Bristleback, probably one of the strongest heroes in this patch, so they basically just nerfed this hero a little bit. Mainly, the big nerfs is that the attack damage per stack on Warpath and the level 25 talent aren't as good. I still think this hero is generally decent, but it's not just like three hitting supports, uh, or like two or three hitting supports like it used to. It's still pretty good, though. Broodmother, I'm not a Broodmother player, but this hero's dead, so they just buffed the hero overall. I'm not going to go too much into that. Centaur, they buffed the hero... Um, in some ways, they also changed it in a little bit of other ways. Like they removed all the armor, which is really important. Um, not all of it, but base armor decreased by three. So this year doesn't have any armor strength heroes with armor. It's super important, but they did give it four regen early on, which is kind of better for laning. I would say overall later in the game, it's not as good with the armor decreased, but the laning is better with this four region. That's a lot. Went from 2.25 to four. I mean, that's significant. Um, then, uh, they decreased, return damage, which I don't really know why they did that later on. That's kind of weird. And then damage rescaled uh, to percent of strength, but not, not a huge deal. The biggest thing is the hitch a ride, but still they, they kind of nerfed this hero. And I don't think this hero was that strong. I mean, I think it is pretty good now overall, but I still think they did these weird nerfs. That I don't understand why they did it. Um, but anyway, hitch a ride. You basically create a little cart behind you and you can put an ally in it. The ally can't move or be targeted, but they get increased, uh, increased attack range and they can still like cast an attack it's kind of weird they're like invulnerable but they can like so you have a lena in this cart like hitting people casting spells it's kind of crazy uh it's a little bit awkward and weird to see it's like a little janky but still kind of cool actually chaos knight small changes not a big deal chen small changes as well uh, just small nerfs a little bit. Um, you can also now, the scepter's a little bit different. You can like sacrifice the creeps that you have to perform like a small heal on a uh, chosen ally. It's kind of interesting. Clink's general buffs here. Uh, basically the number of arrows now is constantly six. So it's always six arrows and it's always the same channel time regardless of level. The damage though scales up per level. So the main thing you're going to be putting, you're going to be putting, um, uh, points into this for the damage, not just like the number of errors. I think this is actually pretty good because it was super annoying to have this ability early on and you only had like three errors. It was just kind of like pointless. Like this, this ability sucked until it was like level four. Now this ability, at least you had like, yes, you don't have as much damage, but it's only 15%. That's not that much of a damage increase. So I think this here is buffed overall. Mana cost increase on skeleton walk. I don't think that's five, not a big deal. Um, and a small decrease on the talent. I don't think that's a huge deal. It's kind of annoying, but I think just burning barrage overall is a lot better. So this hero's laning stage is the big problem. If you can get out of the lane with this hero with a, with a game, you can honestly own the game. But uh, I think now this makes it a little bit better. You actually have laning presence with the right support. You can actually participate in the lane, get last hits, push out waves, this kind of thing with burning barrage. Clockwork, they changed the scepter. Um, now, instead of refreshing all of his abilities and then stunning him after, it kind of does a similar thing, but it doesn't refresh. It just makes all of your abilities, like, way better. Like, battery assault damage and stuns enemies in a radius. Power cogs increases your attack speed by 250. Rocket flare sends out, like, two other rocket flares alongside it. Um, the hookshot stun radius and duration is increased. And then after it expires, you stun for three seconds. So it's a similar concept. It just makes all of your abilities way better instead of making them all refreshed. I think this is kind of cool. It's like the same concept, but just makes the hero overall better. Because if, you, if you're already kind of crappy and nothing but a hookshot bot, like refreshing the cooldown isn't going to help much but now you could like do core offlane clockwork get this ags and you're just like a you're just a beast you're like right clicking people to death you know you have this insane damage stun all this kind of stuff pretty cool we'll see if it's relevant or makes the hero good i don't know but it is kind of a cool concept crystal maiden slight changes and nerfs which is kind of weird i mean the self bonus factor for the mana aura is increased but like overall the you know allies no longer get mana when crystal maiden casts something um Allies within the 1200 radius of Crystal Maiden receive two times the mana. So I guess that's better for uh, laning, but then the mana regen is also rescaled to be a little bit less, especially later. So I don't know. It's kind of weird changes, like some small like laning buff, but then also kind of laning nerf. It's a little bit awkward, a little bit weird. Darkseer changed. They basically reworked the shard 
to have like a radius or to have um, surge units have like a thing behind it, like a trail that slows enemy and deals enemies and deals damage, which is interesting. And then they made the uh, the Ag Scepter now be the normal punch. They did make normal punch better, but I just don't know that it's worth the Scepter now. It just doesn't seem like it at all. I think they made this hero a lot worse. I also hate Darkseer. Everyone knows that probably. So um, no skin off my back, but just very weird changes, I think. Normal punch now is like you know, four times the gold, and it it's better, but is it really that much better? I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, maybe a little bit, but I don't know about that. Dark Willow, small buffs, better Bramble Maze cast point when they, like, pop up, so it's harder to dodge, and then mana cost decreased on Curse Crown. Dawnbreaker, just overall nerfs here, armor decreased, um, cast point improved, but the range decreased early, so the laning isn't as good, but, and then, you know, when casting Starbreaker, this is, like, a change that actually makes the hero a little bit better, I would say, uh, it's just like when you cast it, you kind of start moving forward instead of just like sitting in place when you have the shard. It, so I don't really think this is that much of a nerf. I mean, one armor and like shorter range early on. Yeah, it's a nerf, but really not that much. This hero is probably going to be the hero of the patch. This hero already is really good. It was barely nerfed. This hero is OP and broken. Dazzle, the best support right now. So they just decreased shallow grave duration. And then the damage and heal uh, was decreased as well. But otherwise, I don't think this hero was nerfed that much. I think this hero is still really, really powerful. Um, some, some small ch talent changes. But other than that, I just don't think this hero is nerfed that much. Death Prophet. I don't know why they nerfed this hero. Um, they increased the agility, but they decreased the ma base movement speed of this hero by a lot. I mean, they decreased it. What is that? 25, 35... That's 40 base movement speed. That is insane. This hero is slow now. And then they also removed the max health as damage on Spirit Siphon and just made it flat. This is terrible. Yes, you get more movement speed with Exorcism, but like this is terrible now. I think this hero already, I mean, it was good. Don't get me wrong. It was decent. It was better than I gave it credit for in my tier list, but this hero was not good. And now this hero is dead. Never pick Death Prophet ever again. It's absolutely dog shit. Do not play Death Prophet. It's a terrible hero. Uh, Disruptor Glimpse now actually deals damage. Kind of cool. The further away the hero is, the more damage you're doing to him. That's kind of cool uh, change. So basically, the main thing is that people can't just blink out. So obviously, you usually cast your ult and stuff like that. But if you don't have your ult, if you already used it, people can't just get, you know, uh, glimpsed back and then blink out. That's pretty cool. It also, I mean, damage, the damage overall, I mean, 300 damage at max unit, it, that, that's significant damage. It's not like nothing. It's not just for the blink. It's also good damage. Doom, the main thing with this hero is that the scepter is now reworked. You can cast it on yourself or on enemies still, but basically it makes this AoE doom. So if you cast it on yourself, you can still do everything. It's just that everyone in the AoE around you is now doomed. Same thing happens when you cast it on an enemy. Now everybody around the enemy is also doomed. It's kind of insane. It's pretty cool. I really like this concept. I think this might make doom broken, to be honest. This is like awesome. Like an AoE doom, pretty pretty sick, pretty cool. Cast it on yourself, jump in BKB. Like you have people around you, like what, what, what are they going to do? I mean, unless the enemy has four staff, like they're screwed. Seer's also really fast, so pretty cool. Dragon Bife, Dragon Bife, <laughs> Dragon Knight, just overall buffs to breathe fire and dragon form. Uh, not significant, but pretty cool. Drow Ranger, small buff, uh, damage on multi shot increase. Just makes farming and pushing waves earlier a little bit better. Um, and then some talent changes as well. Earth Spirit, some like quality of life kind of weird things change. I don't really play Earth Spirit, so I don't know, but basically the. Uh, the boulder smash has the same target rules for units as for remnants. I don't really know exactly how this changed. Someone who's an Earth Spirit player will probably have to let me know what this means. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but maybe it's like a huge quality of life change. I don't know. I'm not sure. Fissure for Earthshaker. The uh, cooldown was decreased uh, early, which is kind of cool. Everyone wants to get see Earthshaker. It's a pretty fun hero. This isn't huge buffs or anything like that, but I mean some talent buffs. Uh, overall buffs. Hero's pretty cool. Hopefully we see it in TI. Elder Titan, uh, base agility increased, and damage increased. Another hero that we haven't seen in a while since TI, but it seems like this hero always comes back in TI, so we'll see if this is enough to bring it back. Ember Spirit has probably been the worst spirit now for a little bit, because it was so good for so long they kept nerfing it. Um, they've buffed it a little bit. Agility gain, movement speed decreased a little bit, but not a super big deal. Uh, base health regen like doubled, which is pretty good. Turn rate improved, which is really good for this hero. Uh, mana cost decreased, mana decreased, and then uh, this cooldown increased, which just means you can't like spam it. But I've played against an ember. It doesn't make a big deal. It's not, it's not a huge difference. Overall, though, this hero's buffed a little bit. We'll see if it's enough to make the hero relevant um, in in the game, especially with the mid, mid lane changes. With that small camp, I think that's the biggest thing, honestly. Enchantress, small changes, duration decreased, nature's attendant. This hero is pretty powerful. Now it's nerfed, but the main thing is the shard is reworked. 
to get a new ability called Little Friends. All creeps, enemy, ally, and neutral within 1200 range of the target will attack the target. Basically, it's this weird thing where you can just like cast it on somebody and then like everything attacks it. It just it's like a mini curse uh, from from Winter Wyvern. I, I don't know. We'll see if it's good. It could be really good. It could be kind of weird and awkward and not good. I don't know who will. <laughs> we'll see. Um, Enigma, this hero has been strong for a long time, but, uh, they did nerf it last patch and it still seems to be around now, but now they're changing the, the shard and the scepter, uh, to make it a little bit different and we'll see. I don't think that's like enough to make the hero relevant. I still think it's pretty good. The shard now basically increases the stun before it was the, uh, pulling people into the black hole. Now that's actually the scepter. The shard just increases the stun and every tick of the stun on Malefus creates an Eidolon that can attack you. So it's kind of cool. And then now the Scepter makes it so that uh, Black Hole deals damage and pulls people in, uh, which is kind of interesting. It's cool. I think I think this is a good change. Uh, just kind of putting all of that into the Scepter and then making the Shard different. So this is the first, I think, not the first, I think Bloodseeker was kind of weird. There were some weird changes above, like even Alchemist kind of getting buffed, which was weird. This is the weirdest change of the patch, I think, or one of the weirdest, is that Faceless Void was already like the best carry, or like the top three carry in the patch. Now they increased the base range from 650 to 800. Uh, it's 650 overall. Now level one is 650 and max it's 800. Now the shard range is decreased, people buy shard a lot, but overall it's buffed. Like, so... Before it was 1,050, now it's 1,100 when you get the shard. So it's still buffed overall. So I just don't understand. Like, it's better originally, and then when you get the shard, it's still better. So uh, what? Faces Void was already really good, and now he's amazing. I mean, they did nerf shard. They did nerf uh, Refresher Shard and Refresher Orb, but, like, come on, man. I mean, why, 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 why do this? I don't understand. This, this is the kind of stuff where it makes you really question who's in charge of this. I mean, overall, this patch is good, but that kind of stuff makes it super weird. Grimstroke buffed. This hero was just overall, like, not great. And so they just made the slow duration increase, the cooldown decrease, these kinds of things. Um, Gyrocopter, damage rescaled, mana cost decreased, general buffs for Gyro. Hoodwink kind of changed the projectiles and stuff a little bit here. Like, the speed for the projectiles, everything's a little bit better there. Uh, and then they changed the shard and the scepter. So... The shard damage is increased, or basically the Hunter's Boomerang is now the shard instead. They kind of switched them. So Decoy used to be the shard, Hunter's Boomerang used to be the Scepter. This Hunter's Boomerang was absolutely terrible. I don't know why it was 4,000 gold. Now they made it the shard, um, and the damage is decreased a little bit, and the spell amp was decreased to make up for it. Uh, it no longer reduces status resistance, but now this maybe actually is purchase purchasable and decent. And now the Decoy is kind of interesting. So it does a similar thing, but instead of just like making a Decoy run out, basically you make it... Uh, you make a decoy of yourself casting your ultimate, and then you become invisible, and you can kind of run away from yourself. And then you your uh, ultimate is kind of pointed at the closest hero, the closest enemy hero, and then um, if the decoy is attacked, it does the same thing as it did before, where it lets out a bushwhack, and then if it's not attacked, it will uh, shoot out its uh, your ultimate and do 60% of the regular damage. So that's pretty cool. I actually really like this concept, and we'll see how good it is. It might be not be worth purchasing, but it is kind of cool for like a core hoodwink. Huskar kind of changed and buffed in some ways, but then I guess the shard granted you 65 damage sometimes, and they nerfed that, <laughs> which just makes the hero worse overall. I don't know that this hero is going to see play. Um, it was it was pretty strong like six months to a year ago, and then they nerfed it a bunch. I don't know that these buffs are going to be enough. Invoker now I think is going to be a lot better. So they buffed the Invoker overall. Um, just in general, damage on Sunstrike, Ghost Walk buff, Deafening Blast buff, and then the other big thing is that this hero, with Quas Wex, you obviously just delete people's mana so easily, and now if you if you can jump on them before they BKB and get rid of their mana, um, obviously they can land and BKB really quick right after Tornado, but if you can delete their mana, they can't BKB. This is really important. Like, anything that drains mana, I think, in this patch, especially with the BKB costing 50 mana, is super, super important. I just think that's really good right now. So I think Invoker might be better. Invoker's also kind of one of those, like, not that he can't farm the small camp, but he's not really like a go back in the jungle and just hit camps. So like he's like a lane dominator, ganker. Like, he's also good for that kind of stuff with the meta change with the small camp. IO changes, just overall, same kind of stuff, but just nerfs. Jakiro, um, just small changes here. 
They sort of nerfed the strength gain, but then they just changed the ice path where now it stays on the ground. The stun is the same, but it kind of stays on the ground a little bit longer. So that's kind of interesting. The liquid frost was also um, nerfed a bit. So kind of interesting changes overall. I will say it's sort of half nerf, half buff. Hard to say. It's kind of one of those things where I don't understand why they half nerf, half buff the hero. It's super weird. Jug, really strong carry right now. Nerfed it overall. Base movement speed decreased by five. Shard bonus Movement speed decreased by 25, which is a lot. I mean, you were like flying around the entire map with this insane shard movement speed. Um, and then the heal radius on ward decreased. So overall, just jugs a little bit worse. Now, 25 talent with the two ward uh, ward hits to kill is kind of interesting, but overall, jug is worse. Keeper of the Light cooldown increased and Illuminate heal increased. I think this hero is worse because of the small camp change, but they did kind of nerf the ultimate a little bit to make this hero maybe finally out of the meta from a mid laner. Kunkka, uh, they increased Kunkka's damage and the move speed slow for Torrent. Small buffs to the hero, especially to Torrent. I think the Torrent is the main thing that they buffed here, not just with this, but also with talents. Um, and then they added a slow at level 10 uh, for Tidebringer, which is pretty interesting. This hero could come back into the meta, especially, like I said, I mean, you can farm with this hero in the small camp. was good to farm and stack and stuff. But I think he can also stack and farm the regular jungle, and he loves to gank, loves to get active early. So look for Kunkka to potentially be in the meta from the mid lane legion commander shard armor you know and damage increased i don't know if that's super relevant and the cast range is increased i think this is the biggest thing cast range this cast range is super important because this hero really needs it um obviously it's at 300 if you had the dual cast range level 10 talent it was 350 but now you just get it automatically when it's level three so that's kind of interesting i don't know if that i don't really know if these changes make the hero that much better Leshrac, just generally buffed. I know there's some weird Pulse Nova stuff with how with how the mana works. I'm not a Leshrac player, so I don't really... I'm not super up on that. They changed a little bit of how that works, but I think it's overall buffs to Leshrac. Um, Sinister Gaze, rescaled a little bit to be better. Mana cost decreased. Just overall buffs to Lich, and now Ice Spire is kind of different. Um, I don't know if it's that big of a deal. Lifestealer, another really weird change to the hero. So, bonus attack speed increased at max level by 20. Obviously, that's good. You're even level one. You have five extra attack speed. That's pretty good. Um, makes your laning a little bit better. But the biggest thing is that they changed the 10 talent from 30 attack speed to 150 infest damage, which is terrible. Nobody cares about that. And uh, the rage move speed was increased. Now you're probably always going to get the move speed. But now overall at level 10, you just have 10 less attack speed than you otherwise would because you're pretty much always going to go the attack speed talent at level 10 or you used to. So now they pretty much nerfed the hero. I mean, the laning stage is a little bit better but so what? Now, overall, the hero is nerfed. I don't think making this hero's laning stage a slightly better with five attack speed level one and a little bit of attack speed, you know, 20 attack speed later. I mean, maybe that's relevant, but I just don't think so. I mean, especially as a carry, any carry, I would always prefer having better late game uh, stats and abilities than laning. Like, as long as you can get out of the lane fine, I would rather have the late game stats, the late game attack speed, the late game abilities. It just seems super weird that they keep doing this. Like, why why nerf... Why even do that? Just just keep the talent, man. Just do this and then keep the talent. I just don't understand. It's super weird. Lena, they added a scepter. Um, so the scepter that was uh, pure damage and piercing spell immunity, it just added to 25, which is pretty cool. And then they added a new scepter, which grants this ability Flame Cloak. You get flying movement and spell damage, uh, increased spell damage by 30% and magic resistance by 30%. You kind of become like this weird winter wyvern kind of thing, uh, but just more damage and a little bit tankier. Kind of cool. Haven't really tried it in a game. Don't know if it's something you're actually going to purchase on Lena because you want to go these like right-click damage items, but it could make spell casting Lena an actual thing since you automatically get this at 25. We'll see. I doubt it, but could be a thing. Lion, small buffs, not a huge deal. Uh, Lone Druid, uh, Savage Roar Duration Reduced, Small Nerf, not a huge deal. Um, especially at max level, it's the same, just early on. They changed Lucent Beam uh, for Luna with the Shard. So instead of just having uh, attacks placed when you use your Lucent Beam, now basically every time your Lucent Beam hits someone, you get damage for a short amount of time. This is kind of interesting, especially in combo with your ultimate. You can just, it makes Shard pretty good and the ultimate pretty good on this hero for a team fight because you just get way more damage, especially with Ags, which makes Ags even better. I think this makes the ultimate on this hero like more relevant. Ultimate on this hero was just kind of always, oh, just get one kill in the mid game or just like kind of use it to deter people. It wasn't like a huge part of the hero it was mainly your right click damage, but now it's like really making everything kind of 
come together and work together because before you didn't really care about your ultimate. You used most of your mana for Lucent Beams. Now you kind of want to do both because you get this extra damage. I think this is really powerful. It's pretty cool. Um, we'll see if it's as good as the other shard, but I think it is really interesting. This is also the other big change. Lunar Blessing, now global at nighttime. That's crazy. This is like the new Drow. If you remember 10 years ago, maybe, whenever it was, Drow used to have like a global attack speed or damage uh, ability, like constantly for everyone. I think it might have been attack speed, but maybe it was damage. I don't remember. But anyway, this is basically what Drow used to have, but now it's only at night, which is kind of cool. So we'll see if Luna becomes very good. Um, it might be some kind of like Luna meta because at nighttime, everyone's way better at laning. Uh, Lycan, some small changes here uh, to the Wolves. They're buffed a little bit, but then also nerfed a little bit. It's kind of weird. And then how is global at night? So kind of another nighttime theme. Overall, not huge changes, though. Uh, Magnus, uh, regen increased, cooldown decreased, and slow increased. So buffs to Magnus. Magnus was nerfed into the ground ever since last TI. So they're kind of bringing it back, maybe saying, hey, uh, maybe come, come play Magnus again, uh, Collapse. Maybe he's pretty good now. Marcy, so this is one of the bigger changes of the patch for heroes. They pretty much did the Earth Spirit thing. So I don't know if you know, but Earth Spirit used to have stun and slow switched. So the roll didn't stun. I think the boulder smash kick thing stunned and the roll slowed. They basically are switching this on Marcy now where dispose slows and rebound stuns. I think this is a pretty good change. I think this makes the hero a lot more balanced. You still do similar stuff, but you just seem more balanced because I think the dispose being like throwing you back and stunning you was so annoying. Now you can get, you get thrown back, but you can at least like blink out. You can run away. You can, you know, pop BKB. You can do something. Now the rebound, it's a good initiation. It's an initiation stun. You know, I think that's really good. I think this is kind of better. I think the hero is still really good overall, but I think this is kind of like a better change. I just like the way that these abilities work now more. We'll see how it affects Marcy, but I still think Marcy is pretty good overall. And then there's some small stuff to unleash that I think makes this hero kind of better as a carry, maybe. Like, it just focuses on yourself and the target you're hitting more, rather than, like, the burst AoE kind of, uh, the, um, pulses that come out. So we'll see if that really makes a big deal, but I, I don't think it does, but, um, with the scepter and stuff like that, could be more of a core, but I still think it's a support. So we'll see if this is enough to like make the hero not good. I think it's still pretty good. Mars, uh, mana cost decreased on the spear, slow duration increased, just general buffs uh, to Mars. They also reworked Bulwark a little bit. It's kind of weird, the wording here. I just don't know what exactly that means. They just kind of changed it. Um, and then they kind of fixed that sometimes flying units can... They could still escape. So people could still get out of Arena of Blood, which is really weird. I don't really know why. Uh, that could happen. It, it just could. And now at max level, the spear damage is rescaled, which is interesting. So I think this hero's overall buff. This hero was good for years and years and years, and they finally nerfed it like into Oblivion. But then they kind of changed the flying unit thing, and um, even though it was broken, now that it's not broken and they gave it some you know, better mana, more damage, or slow duration, whatever, I think this is going to be better overall. I think Mars is just one of these offlaners. If it's ever a little bit good, it's going to be picked all the time because it's just so good. This hero's just overall, the kit is just... It just, the kit is so good in all the different ways with the stuns and the slows and the big team fight ultimate and the good laning. Really good hero. Medusa, physical attack, damage amplification increased a little bit. I don't think that's enough to bring the hero back into the meta, but the hero is still not bad. I just don't, I mean, this hero's been good for like a year and a half. I mean, it's not like OP like it was, but it's still pretty good. Meepo, small changes, not a Meepo player. Don't think this is enough to bring the hero back. I think the hero needs like a complete rework or something like that. Marana, this is another change of the patch that makes absolutely no sense. Uh, they decreased the agility gain 0.3. Not a big deal, but just is weird. I mean, they're buffing Starstorm and Leap a little bit, but not enough. This hero is irrelevant, I would say. This hero's just not good. And then they're they're nerfing the core Marana and like making this slightly better, but not really relevant at all. I don't know why they do this kind of stuff. Very, very weird. Monkey, uh, shard rework, kind of interesting. Basically, you can buy the shard, and now if you toggle... Bound the strike on, you kind of like slide down your uh, strike and like teleport, like jump to the target, to the end of the strike. So if you have a target at the end, you're in the trees, you hit them, you'll just like slide right there and you can start attacking. Pretty cool. It's a pretty decent shard upgrade. I think the other shard was kind of stupid with the with the mischief thing. It was kind of dumb. So Morphling. So they changed Morphling in basically a major way. So now you can actually attribute shift while stunned, which is super OP. Last time they had this in Morph, it was like super OP, but kind of consistent with the mana thing um, with BKB is now it costs way more mana. 
So, or double the mana, basically. So mana cost rescaled from 10 to 20. I don't know. I feel like later in the game, I just didn't even notice the mana. I mean, I don't play Morphling a lot, but you like barely notice the mana. Now, let's see if you do notice the mana. Maybe you do, but the fact that you can cast it during stun is insane. Um, yeah, I just think that's really crazy. Well, obviously you have to buy the shard, but you're going to get the shard because uh, casting this while stunned is just so OP. I think Morph is like going to be pretty powerful right now. I'm just going to say. Naga, kind of some weird changes. Uh, everything is relatively similar. I mean, a little bit of a buff, but they just added this uh, this reel in ability, and then Riptide no longer slows, which is kind of weird. But uh, this reel in ability, where the scepter now also grants you a new ability, where you can channel it and pull in affected units by ensnare in a 1400 range towards her at 100. So you kind of just like ensnare, like people are ensnared and they just like come closer to you. It's kind of a cool idea. I just don't know if it's something you're going to buy. I mean, it's, this year it gets a lot of items, so maybe late game it'll be cool. We'll see. We'll see. I think still the thing is the spell immune and sleeping units, having Scepter do that, which it still does, um, it just no longer decreases its snare cooldown, but still allows you to do those things. I think that's the bigger part, not this real inability. Nature's Prophet added uh, or reworked the shard, added this kind of new ability called Curse of the Old Growth. And you pretty much just like reveal invisible units in this area. And then uh, each tree reduces movement speed by 7%, 15 damage per second, and those kinds of things. So basically, if people are in the trees, they get damaged based on the trees around them, including your treants. So they get damaged and slowed, which is kind of interesting. Uh, you, I, I didn't really like his, his shard was just super cheesy and annoying, so I'm glad they changed it. Necro, just small buffs. Really not a big deal. I mean, yes, the mana cost has increased, but uh, it's not really a nerf. I mean, early on, whatever. This hero doesn't care about mana. So just small buff. Void Stalker, uh, or Void Stalker, Night Stalker, Void, Scepter duration increased barely at all, and then Crippling Fear duration decreased. So it's like a small nerf here and a small buff. Not a huge deal. One second is kind of important, but whatever. Nyx, small buff, cast range increased, cooldown decreased. This hero's kind of not seen play for a long time, so small buffs. Ogre, kind of interesting. So the health regen is decreased a lot. So basically, it used to have 3.25 regen. Three regen is just gone. So now you barely, you don't even have one regen. You have 0.25, so you're not regening a lot. Um, and your armor is decreased. So you're not as, like, beef, big and beefy. But you have base damage increased by 20. So now you're still you're still whacking people real hard. So you're not as tanky, but you are really like way more offensive. Uh, you just, you, you have Ignite, you cast it, they're slowed, you're smacking them for like a million damage. I mean, you're still pretty tanky. You don't have a lot of regen, but four armor is still pretty good. Um, and you still have a lot of health. So this is, it's kind of an interesting change. We'll see if this makes Ogre like better in lane or worse. Worse. Omni Knight, uh, now Heavenly Grace is applied to you and the other target, similar to, I think, I thought it dispelled, I thought you already did that, maybe it just didn't dispel you, I don't know. Um, Hammer of Purity, small buffs, and then uh, Guardian Angel, duration decreased, which, why, why, this hero was not picked, why are you doing this, stop doing this. Ice Frog, whoever's making these changes, stop making changes like this, please, for the love of God, don't do this, this hero is not played, stop nerfing it. Oracle, Small buffs here, mana cost decreased, cooldown decreased, heal and damage per second increased. So just small buffs overall. We'll see if that makes Oracle good. Oracle, I think, mainly is just about, you know, is are there good Oracle pairings? And can this hero, like, get the spells off on the heroes that they need to? Otherwise, you know, it's not that good. OD, small change, is not a big deal. I think this cast range is kind of cool, level 15, but whatever. Pangolier change, mana cost decreased on Swashbuckle. Shield du uh, crash duration decreased by a lot. It's in half, but the reduction is increased, especially level one. So this makes the early lane for this hero, like with shield crash, better. But overall, this this ability is just worse. I don't really know why they did that. Pangolier wasn't that good. Um, and then they decreased the proc chance. It just feels super weird that they nerfed this hero. I didn't think this hero was all that good. I think it was okay, but it was definitely more powerful in past patches. I mean, obviously, this buff is good and early it's better, but, like, I just don't understand. Uh, why, why, why do that to this hero? It's one of the weird changes of the patch. PA now has lifesteal on Phantom Strike. Pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if that changes the build much, but just makes the hero better. You can jungle a lot easier. Pretty cool. Uh, PL, PL a little bit better, more health regen. Phoenix... A little bit better, more damage, more health regen. 
Primal Beast, some changes here. So they obviously added this here to Captain's Mode. So more regen or, you know, went from 0 to 0.25. That's something. And then they added a Scepter. I don't believe it had a Scepter before. Uproar releases three waves of projectiles per attack, which split in two after 1.25 second. Um, each projectile deals 100 damage to enemies and applies break. So I think the biggest thing about this is that you basically get a break, which is kind of cool in an AoE. It does a little bit of damage, obviously, but I think it's really the break that's the big thing. Um, and you can also use it while you channel, so that's kind of cool too. So I think a break on any hero is going to be important because obviously there's so many things you want to break in the game against so many different heroes. And if you don't have somebody that loves to buy Shadow Blade... Um, then it just can feel awkward. So having this option is pretty good. Rock throw, really weird ability. I just don't think it's like crap. I, who is going to get this and why? It's just super weird. I mean, yes, it splits into three, but <laughs> I don't know. Weird. I don't know if this is enough to make this here relevant, but we'll see. Uh, pros might experiment and find out it's pretty good. Puck, one of the best heroes of the patch, the best mid laner. Uh, changed a little bit, but really not nerfed at all significantly. I mean, yes, the talents are worse, but not by that much. And, I mean, if anything, obviously the biggest change is the small camp change, and that does hurt Puck, but Puck still loves to, is still, you know, able to dominate the lane, is still able to gank really well, and scales super well into the late game, so I don't know why they didn't nerf this hero. That's what I'm saying, sometimes these, like, really good and really bad heroes, the changes make no sense. Pudge, very popular right now, they decreased the scepter radius, which... It would seem super OP. It was super big. And then Flesh Heap is a lot of mana maxed out. So, I mean, 80, 80 mana, that's a lot. I mean, it was already a good amount of mana. Now that this feels like you're really mana starved on this hero, which is always going to be a problem. Um, I still think it's good, just not as OP as it was. Pugna, small buffs. Uh, doesn't give spell damage reduction. I think this was super annoying, but the damage is increased. And now the um, Scepter... Actually, this is kind of a nerf overall. I, again... Pugna not played, but super weird changes that maybe they just wanted to get rid of that in general, and then they'll deal with it later kind of thing. They're not going to buff the hero like crazy, but they're just going to get rid of this concept. Now the scepter is changed. It's no longer, well, I think it was like you could just cast it constantly. Now it's the cooldown is 50% or reduced by 50%, but it basically makes you casting it on the same guy better because spell damage is increased, and their spell damage is decreased. Um as you are casting it, which is pretty cool. So you just buy BKB, you cast on somebody that don't have mobility, you're just like doing more and more and more damage to them. Queen of Pain now. Uh, new Scepter. The old Scepter was just kind of boring. Shadow Strike, initial damage is increased by a lot. And then if you recast Shadow Strike on an enemy that already has it, basically a Scream of Pain is let out around them and hits all the nearby enemies. That's kind of cool. Don't know if it's good enough to buy, but it is kind of cool. Look for Queen of Pain to become a very strong, very popular offlaner this patch. I already saw, I think, Team Secret Nisha play it in last night's games at the Malaysia, ESL1 Malaysia. And I think this hero, because it's a lane dominator, it's a good ganker. Um, I think this hero is going to come into the meta and be big in the meta. I don't know if this is enough buffs to make it that good, but it is still pretty good. Um, I just look out for Queen of Pain. Razor, one of the best heroes right now, so we'll see if it gets nerfed. Uh, movement speed is decreased. Buff duration decreased for static, link, static Link early, which is really good. But now you can apply two Static Links to one target, even if they already have a debuff, which is interesting. But obviously the Refresher Orb was nerfed overall, but that's still a pretty significant buff for, um, for your Refresher. Now they reworked Shard, now always it's up to three valid targets, even if the attack or caster of the incoming spell is Magic Immune. Uh, so that's kind of a buff. And then obviously they changed the talents here. I think these talents are a little bit worse, but still, this isn't that big of a deal. I mean, movement speed is super important on the hero, but I don't really think this is that big of a deal. Of a deal. Early laning, yes, it is worse. So it's. Not, I just think this is like a nerf to the off lane razor. Maybe this is better now mid or like carry. Not as good of an off laner, but still not enough nerfs, I think, to razor. Razor is super powerful, and they just didn't really do much to it. Ricky, another one that's super weird. I don't know why they did this. This hero was not played. Nobody picks it. It's absolute dog shit. And they decreased the bonus damage. Now, level 1 is the same, but max level is decreased by 15. Now, yes, Cloak and Dagger, Agility Damage Multiplier is now doubled against creeps. That's good for farming, I guess. But you're not really backstabbing creeps all that much anyway. Yes, you get your Blink Strike. Yes, you get your whatever the AoE ability is. I always forget. Um that you automatically get backstabs on creeps, but you're not really using that all that often. You're hitting creeps just in the front of the creeps more often than not. So this doesn't really make up for that at all. And just just don't change this. Just don't nerf the blink strike. Just make this better, and that's a fine change. Why would you nerf Ricky when this hero 
is never played. I don't understand these changes. It makes no sense. Whoever is doing this kind of thing where you like buff one part and nerf another part needs to be fired immediately because this is absolutely stupid. It makes no sense. Stop doing this. Uh, Rubik, base armor increased by one. Mana cost decreased. Uh, jump reduction decreased. I don't really know why these changes... I mean, I guess Rubik was kind of good. Um, but I don't really know. I mean... Yes, better armor, but then mana mana cost decreased and jump reduction decreased. Um, I mean, I guess it wasn't that good. I, this hero is kind of it's at a weird spot, so I guess buffing it is fine. It makes us it makes little. Not that it makes no sense, like Ricky. I'm kind of still focused on Ricky, but I guess the Rubik one is fine. These are buffs overall, and this hero is pretty good. Sand King uh, used to be very OP, and then was kind of nerfed to Oblivion. They buffed it a little bit, but I don't know that's enough to actually make this hero relevant. Shadow Demon. So they changed Shadow Demon a little bit. Um, replaced Soul Catcher with Disseminate. So Disseminate, whenever the target takes damage, all enemies, including the target itself, if it's an enemy, within 600 range of the target, also receive additional damage um, by a percentage. Can target an enemy and allied units. Effect is paused if hidden in disruption. So you can like cast it, then it the you know, the duration is paused for a little bit there. I think this is pretty cool. In a big team fight, you're going to be doing extra damage when you cast this on somebody if they're around other people. You can also cast it on your ally, and then they're just doing extra damage um, if they take damage, which is pretty cool. It's like a kind of cool concept. We'll see how good it is. We'll see if it's enough to make Shadow Demon good. Um, but yeah, it's kind of an interesting concept for the hero. I haven't really tried it in game, haven't seen it, but pretty interesting concept. Shadow Fiend, the change. To Shadow Fiend means Shadow Fiend is now Bat Rider. <laughs> so basically, you have more damage, and now your Shadow Raise debuff applies a 30% a turn speed slow and 15% movement speed slow per stack. Start, starting with the second one, not the first one, but still per stack. That is kind of crazy. This hero is like Bat Rider basically now, and you have two extra damage in lane, which is interesting. Look out for Shadow Fiend mid to potentially be a thing. I still don't think this hero is going to be relevant. It's at a very weird place because... The magic build is just crap. It's just not good, especially in pros. So you want to go the damage build, like the right-click damage build, but then you're playing carry from the mid lane. So maybe this hero carry is better. We'll see. I think this hero might just become a carry eventually, and maybe this is enough to make the lane stage good enough that it actually is a pretty good carry. Shadow Shaman, uh, damage decrease, cast range increase, uh, shard bonus cast range decreased. So overall, it looks like it's a decrease. And then uh, turn rate increased from 0.5 to 1. So small nerfs i would say to shadow shaman i think this hero was really good overall um for a while especially when he could solo roche they did nerf that a little bit it was still sort of relevant but now i think it might be a little bit dead i mean this isn't that big but still silencer hasn't seen play for so long so let's see i think they're going to buff it in general but i don't know if it's enough to take it to like competitive level or to see actual play the uh, base attack speed decreased, base attack time improved, which I don't really know the calculation if that's that much better. Silence damage multiplier decreased, penalty duration increased per cast. So again, they kind of changed this where the damage multiplier is decreased, but then it's increased this way. So I don't really know whether that makes it better. It probably makes it better because this hero's garbage. They reworked the shard. Now causes every fourth glaze of attack to silence an enemy, which is pretty cool, uh, which is more for like a core silencer. And then intelligence, intelligence multiplier decreased. Uh, intelligence multiplier now works on units that don't have intelligence, treats them as having zero, which is kind of interesting. So good for farming. Looks like they probably made silencer as a core a little bit better. Maybe silence, silencer as a mid laner, I think is kind of cool now because that small camp's gone. It's more about pressure, lane domination. We'll see if this mid silencer becomes a thing. But they, again... It's hard for me to tell if this is actually a buff because they do so many stupid things where they nerf heroes that are bad that I actually don't know if this could potentially be just an overall nerf because uh, whoever's doing these changes doesn't know what they're doing. So I don't know. It's interesting, but who knows? Maybe Core Silencer is better now, kind of in general. Um, then some small ta uh, talent changes as well, which could make the hero good. Skywrath, they changed the, sh uh, the rework, the shard to sh Shield of the Scion, which... I feel like it does the same thing as it did before, where whenever you cast, uh, or whenever you deal damage to a hero, you gain intelligence and armor. I think that's like the same thing <laughs> that it did before. I don't. Maybe it was just like instead of dealing damage, it was on cast of the ability. I don't know. Um, just small changes, not a big deal. Slardar buffs. These are pretty cool buffs. I think now Guardian Sprint gives you health regen while you're in water, which is pretty cool. Um, and then Slither and Crush. Uh, the mana is increased at level one, but actually decreased overall, and then creates a 
puddle of water that lasts for a few seconds. Scepter still makes a bigger puddle, but this automatically gives you a puddle. And now if you remember level six, when you get your ultimate and you cast on somebody, they also have a puddle trailing behind them so you can run into that. So there's a lot of water on the map now that you can stand in, which just gives you more health regen and armor, which is really cool. I think this hero's buffed a lot. This is awesome. Uh, it's a pretty cool hero. I like to play the hero. We'll see if it becomes a carry. I know Mason likes to play it as a carry. Some uh, players like to play it as a carry. It's more of an offlaner, at least now, but we'll see what this does with the hero. I think this hero could come into the meta. Slark, another hero where they changed it in really dumb ways that I really don't like. I don't understand why they do this. Slark, Ricky, Bloodseeker, Lifestealer. These heroes, they just nerf them in weird ways when they're not even that good. I mean, Bloodseeker at least was kind of good, but it just makes no sense. So agility gain, decre agility gain decreased by 0.2, completely pointless. I mean, attack speed was increased again by 10, which is cool. I mean, that is a good buff. I will say this hero's gotten a lot of base attack speed over the years. So this attack, you're attacking pretty fast early on. So um, I'm going to skip over pounce really quick. Shadow Dance health regen per second rescaled from 5.67% to 60, 90, 120. This is absolutely terrible. You're getting now at max level, you're getting less health regen after you pass like 1700 HP or something like that. That is completely terrible. This hero buys a lot of stat items, usually by Scott, Scotty and stuff like this. You want high HP to get good regen now like late game you're just not dude 120 health per second regen for shadow dance and then you're pressing your ultimate and like that is just nothing man that feels so bad now they did buff the pounce here they changed pounce a little bit so they actually added damage to the pounce i think last patch and now instead of adding like having damage now it applies three stacks of essence shift at max level which is pretty cool i will say this is a cool buff i like this I think I see what they're going for in general. Like, at least for this one, I understand. What they're doing with this hero is they're making it... They're trying to make it better early game. So, maybe you can max pounce now. And now you're really good in the laning stage. You have, like, two points and you're passive. Now you can max pounce. You get essence shift. You're, like, dominating the lane. You're snowballing. Especially because with the passive, they added um, the permanent agility steal. I think they're trying to get this hero to be more involved early and be, like, this early game kind of snowball hero that really is wanting to participate and run around the map and kill people and not as threatening late game. The problem with that concept, and I think it's a really bad idea, is that this hero will never, ever, ever be good early game in the laning stage unless you just make him super, super OP. That's because the whole idea of the hero is that you have terrible stat gain and you have terrible stat gain, like you have the worst stat game in the gain in the entire game. That's because you're stealing stats when you click them. So because you have terrible stat game, you gain, you start out with bad stats, you gain bad stats with every level, and just in general, you're going to be a bad laner because of that. You don't have the best HP regen or like armor, or you just don't have very much any of anything in their in their laning stage. So I just don't think that's really good, a good concept. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they'll change it. Maybe this pounce change is enough to make the hero OP early on. Like you max pounce out, you get Q later and you just dominate the lane. Hey, maybe that's the case and I'll be prove, proven wrong, but they nerfed Shadow Dance so much. It's insane. It's very, very bad right now for later in the later portion of the game. And um, they also nerfed Essence Shift to be terrible later in the later portion of the game. I know I'm taking a lot of time on Slark, but I'm a Slark player and I I just don't like these changes and I just wanted to kind of focus on those changes. Very, very interesting that they did that. Maybe it's good enough to make the hero good early, especially with Ags now with the two pounces. It can be good. So don't get me wrong. This is kind of cool. I like that they did this. I just hate that they changed the Shadow Dance, um, Max Health, Regen, and I just hate that they changed Essence Shift last patch. Just leave those things alone and do this, and I'm good. Obviously, that's buff since a hero I like, so... But still, I just don't... It just makes it super annoying. Obviously, you get this 40 here with the talent, but still, I don't think that's good enough. Snapfire, the Snapfire cookie shard, uh, or the shard is now on the cookie. So you basically get a tiny Mortimer kiss and extra range with the cookie. I don't know that I love this um, because the range kind of makes it weird because, like, you're already kind of aiming it, and now when the, the range has changed, it just makes it awkward. Um, the stun is increased, obviously, a little bit, which is cool. But I kind of like the old shard, but it just kind of made you do, like, stun them more. 
with the scatter blast, so it's kind of whatever to me. I think it's good that they add the scatter blast, da blast damage to the talent now, though, which is kind of cool because now you can clear waves without the shard and uh, farm. That's the main way you're going to be farming, even as a support on this hero. So interesting changes. Don't know if I love it, but it's interesting. Uh, Sniper, this is a nerf, but it's kind of a fix. Uh, basically, you just can't cast this while rooted or leashed. So, I mean, this hero was okay. I really still don't know why they nerfed it, though, because, like, it was only just started getting play, and now they nerfed it. It's kind of annoying that they did this similar to Slark and Bloodseeker and uh, Lifestealer, uh, Ricky, Marana. You know, why nerf Sniper? Why do that? Uh, Spectre, intelligence gain decreased for some reason. Nobody knows why. That's a weird change. But then they buffed Spectral Dagger. This hero wasn't that good. Okay, it was okay. We'll see if with the meta shifting and all this stuff happening in the game, um, if Spectre comes back to be... Uh, good. We'll see. I, I don't know that it will, but maybe this is enough to give it a little bit of extra interesting mechanic where you're getting desolate now every time uh, you get hit with Spectral Dagger. Could be interesting. Could kill supports pretty easily. Pretty cool hero. Spear Breaker. So the main change here is that the shard was reworked to give a new ability called Planner Pocket. Basically, when you cast it, you'd redirect a spell from a nearby enemy. So if you know somebody's stunning a nearby or a nearby ally. Um, you are redirecting that stun to you, and before, like while you get hit with that stun, or when you get hit with that stun, you have a 25% increased magic resistance. So you basically can cast this, cast your other ability that gives you status resistance, you kind of deflect a spell onto yourself, and then you barely are stunned, and then you have low, you don't take much damage because of the magic resistance. I think that's really cool, it's a really good idea to give him this extra ability, uh, because it really kind of synergizes with the hero, pretty cool. Storm Spirit, general buffs to this hero. This hero was like nerfed into Oblivion with the uh, change to the Null Talisman. We'll see what the changes to mid if this makes this hero more relevant. Sven, some small changes. Quality of life, the Scepter uh, adds an autocast. If it's enabled, Sven does not travel with the Storm Hammer. I think this is really cool. Look out for Sven, honestly. With the changes to the meta and the small camp in the mid, I keep saying that, but with, with those kind of changes, that can have a snowballing effect. Sven was super OP. Sven was the best hero in the game when he had that scepter that basically dispelled and tr and he traveled with the storm hammer. You can now get that same thing just with the shard and the scepter. And now the fact that you can choose whether or not to travel with the storm hammer and it's not just like you're forced to go in, I think that makes this hero a lot better. You have other small buffs here with the uh, health regen, the duration increasing and the mana cost decreased and the cooldown decreased. I think this makes this hero Pretty good watch out for Sven being a legit carry in this patch. I might be wrong, but just watch out. Techies, uh, small buffs here because no one was really playing it since the change. I think it's still pretty good. I think like you can make it work, but just nobody really liked to play it. So we'll see if this is enough to make the hero better. Just small buffs. TA, another really good hero right now, but they barely nerfed the hero. Mana cost decreased early on, which is a buff. It makes no sense. Why are you buffing the hero? Why? Why? Why do this? This pisses me off. Like, yes, you're kind of nerfing this um, a little bit, but, like, not really, and you're buffing this. So it's like, TA is just still amazing. I, I don't understand why they did this. This is the kind of thing where, you know, something like Slark up here, you could look at this and say, hey, uh, I kind of get what you're trying to do. I don't agree with it. It's kind of dumb. Um, even Ricky, I can get what you're trying to do, but it doesn't make sense. This... Literally zero sense. This makes absolutely... I don't know what happened there when I clicked. This makes absolutely zero sense. Whoever did this has no idea what they're doing. TA is still super, super powerful. Next, Terrorblade. Um, buffs to Terrorblade. Terrorblade was already good. And yet they are increasing... I guess they just really want Arteezy to be good in this TI. They just... They need Arteezy to be good. Arteezy has to play Terrorblade every game and he has to win. You can't can't get last in TI. Can you, uh, Arteezy? Who knows? We'll see. Tidehunter. The big thing is the shard is now reworked and grants an extra ability called Tendrils of the Deep. Basically, you have a slow-moving lion stun. It just like sends out tentacles in a direction, um, does 50% of ravage damage, and stuns as well, which is kind of cool. So it's like a follow-up to ravage. You jump in, you ravage, People are stunned. You send out your tendrils to chain stun them. I think this is pretty cool. This may make Tide really strong and come back into the meta. I mean, he also has a small buff here to Kraken Shell. And, um, you know, chain stunning people with your ultimate is very, very good. Timbersaw has been so strong for so long. I understand why they're changing the hero. They're kind of nerfing it. Um, the strength gain was increased a little bit. That's not a super as relevant. It's not super relevant, at least not as relevant as reactive armor here. 
So basically, they kind of buff reactive armor in a sense, where the overall armor and HP, I believe, is a little bit more. Um, so yeah, overall, the armor and the HP is more, but you now get less per stack, and you have to have more stacks. So the max stacks used to be 24, now it's 40. This just makes it harder to get the stacks, to keep the stacks, because you can't just like go into a bunch of creeps for like two seconds and get all the stacks. You have to sit there for a while, you know, it's pretty slow, it's not as easy to get the stacks, and I think that's a significant nerf, because getting the stacks is one of the hardest parts of the hero. Like, if you're running across the map, or you just respawn, or you didn't just farm creeps, or you weren't just sitting in a, uh, a creep wave, it can be sometimes hard to have the stacks you need for the fight to actually be that tanky in the fight. And so, and then as the fight progresses, you know, you're going to be losing these stacks unless you're getting clicked a ton. So I think just overall this nerfs the hero. It's obviously better when you have the max stacks. I just don't think you're going to get max stacks all that often. Uh, then they changed this a little bit. They, they made chakra a little bit better because of that, but I don't think it's enough. Now, Tinker, another weird change. I mean, I get that they did this change. Like, I feel like with the Ricky change or like whatever it was... Um, and some of these other changes, they just, or no, with the uh, Pugna change, they're like, let's just get rid of this thing and then deal with how good it is later. This is kind of the Tinker nerf because they like destroyed this hero. Uh, absolutely destroyed this hero. This hero was pretty good maybe six months ago, but it was already nerfed into the ground. And now they basically made Rearm go on cooldown if it gets interrupted, which I think was the thing that everyone was calling for like a long time ago. But the thing is they did it now when the hero's already terrible. So I think they just did this now, which sort of makes no sense in the context of doing it right now. But I think what they did is they did this because they wanted to do it. And instead of really buffing the hero, like they did buff the hero a little bit, but not significantly. Then I think after TI, maybe they're going to buff the hero. Probably they didn't buff it now because they don't want it to be OP for TI. They don't want to see Tinker running around in TI. So then after TI, maybe they're going to buff this hero a lot and just try to get it at to a normal, relatively like good equilibrium spot for... Um, so it's not super annoying and OP, like when you get stunned and have the rearm interrupted and then it goes on cooldown. Like, I think that's an interesting and good thing um, to do to the hero, but now you need to, like, buff the rest of the hero to actually make it viable, but now it's not as annoying. Um, so I get what they're doing, it's just they didn't buff it in response to this nerf enough, I think. Tiny has been good for so long, so they increased the mana cost, uh, decreased the range, and now they made the attack speed way worse, which is kind of weird because obviously the carry tiny wasn't as good. Like people weren't even buying shard that much, but it's just overall the hero is a lot worse now. Treant um, hasn't been played too much, so agility gain decreased, which is an interesting nerf. Actually, I think, never mind. I think Treant has been played. I just haven't seen too much of it. I just feel like Treant has, always has zero impact whenever I see him. But um, anyway, uh, living armor changed a little bit, uh, buffed a little bit there. Movement speed, bonus decrease. So some small nerfs, some small buffs. I don't think this is that big of a deal. Uh, it really doesn't matter too much. I don't know if this is enough to make the hero different or played a lot or played not at all. We'll see. Troll Warlord, much needed buffs to this hero. Or, I mean, uh, I'll say it this way. This hero needs a lot of buff buffs. The ult needs to be changed. Now they had Ensnare piece, uh, Pierce Smell. Can I talk? Ensnare Pierce Spell Immunity, which is really good. I will say that is really good. I just don't know that it's enough to make this hero viable considering how bad the ultimate is. Now, I might be wrong. Of course, obviously, anything going through spell immunity is good. We'll see if it's enough, though. Tusk has been pretty good, um, but they gave him more health regen, they gave him more mana regen, and they gave him more stun. And uh, But now Walrus, Walrus Kick is blocked by Lincolns, which I guess is a kind of makes sense, because you click it on the guy. But some small buffs here. I mean, I don't know if that's... I don't know if it's a big deal, but Tusk has been pretty decent, I think. So it's interesting. I'm not going to freak out about that one, though. I kind of like Tusk. It's kind of cool. And he has he wasn't like OP or anything, but he was kind of good. So now he's a little bit better. Underlord, max health burn rescaled um, to be worse later. Uh, cooldown increased. Or, yeah, increased from 12 to... Which, I don't really understand why they did that. I mean, I don't think... I don't think this hero was that good. I mean, yes, it was being played sometimes, I guess, by like OG, I guess, like two patches ago. I don't know, man. Why are they doing this kind of thing? It's super weird. Anyway, Fiend's Gate... Cooldown decrease, so they make, made Fiends Gate better. And the incoming damage reduction increased uh, early levels. Yeah, why would they nerf Underlord? That makes no sense to me. I mean, Underlord was not that good. I mean, he was okay, but he was not that good. So that just makes no sense to me. Stre uh, strength gain decreased. Debuff no longer modifies your health when expiring. Cast point improved. Damage rescaled um, to be a little bit better later, but worse early. 
and then uh, like zero damage early, which is really interesting. And then cast point improved. So, so some just minor things. And then uh, mana cost increased, cast point increased. So like, I don't know that these are all even relevant, honestly. I think this is the mode, the biggest one. Zero damage, level one. Kind of annoying. Um, I don't know. Again, I don't know if this hero was all that popular. So it's weird they're changing it this way. Earthshock mana increased. Not a huge deal. Um, the weird, the biggest thing with this hero, I think, is that the uh, level 15 talent is uh, 10 agility is replaced with Earth, Earthshock applies two stacks of Fury Swipes. I actually think that's pretty relevant. Um, for level 15 talent, I mean, this makes... Fury Swipes is how you do all your damage. It's kind of like with the Slark thing. You just automatically get these two stacks. That's pretty good. We'll see if that's enough to keep this hero relevant, especially with the nerfs to... or the changes to uh, Morbid Mask, so he can't really uh, get... Roshan as easily early, but uh, I mean, obviously they nerfed it here, so but I don't know if this is probably not enough to make up for that, but it's still a pretty cool change. Venge cast range increased, but shard no longer gives cast range, uh, and then the damage increased here, so just small changes. I don't know, it's super relevant. Veno, so the big thing with Veno is they gave him a new shard. Now it gets, uh, you're granted this ability latent toxicity. So you apply it to a hero. It does damage per second, slows, all the similar, you know, typical Veno things. The biggest thing though, is if this poison, it says if this poison is, is dispelled in any way, the target will receive 300 damage and be stunned for two seconds. This is huge because it goes through like jug spin. It goes through BKB. It goes through Manta. This is really, really good because uh, obviously stunning a BKB target is crazy. Stunning a magic immune target is crazy. You can also see which one the Manta target is, which is really good. I think this makes this hero really good. I think it was already verging on playable, and now I think this shard is just OP. This is a super good shard. Because um, obviously you do want to dispel this dude's stuff, but now the only thing that this works against against uh, the only thing that works uh, works against this in a good way, a reliable way, is the... Um, is Yule Scepter, and that's why they changed it up above. When you saw those Yule Scepter uh, changes where the Dispel is applied instantly and then you're cast into the air instead of when you come down, it's because the Dispel is applied instantly and you're stunned and you still take damage while you're flying in the air, so you keep that in mind, you will take the damage, but you don't get stunned because you're in the air while you're stunned. So that, I think, is honestly the main reason they changed Yule Scepter for this. But uh, pretty interesting, pretty cool. I think that makes the hero pretty good. Viper has been very OP, um, so they increased the mana, cross, mana cost, and some did some other stuff here. I don't know if this is enough to make the hero worse, though. Uh, obviously, the duration is decreased here, but it's, it's one and a half seconds. Not that big of a deal. Um, corrosive skin now doubles damage and slows enemy f within 500 distance of Viper. Additionally, allows corrosive skin to deal the first instance of damage the moment the debuff is applied. Um, that's I feel like that's a buff, which is interesting. And then now the scepter is reworked, so it's no longer just this like better ultimate. Um, Grant's nosedive, Viper slams to the ground, disarming enemies in a 500 radius for four seconds and splattering everyone in a 1200 area um, with corrosive skin. This is kind of cool. Yeah, his uh, Ags was very, very boring. So the fact that they changed it and made this a little bit better is pretty cool. We'll see how good that is. I don't know if it's worth buying, but obviously getting gone on and then disarming them and then, you know, giving corrosive skin to everyone. Pretty interesting. Pretty cool idea. We'll see if that's enough to make the hero... Uh, like make this purchasable, but I don't think these nerfs are enough to make and like a small buff here, I would say. I don't know if this nerf and that small nerf is enough to really make this hero irrelevant. It's still pretty good as a laner. I think this might come back as like a mid though, because of the way mid, mid works now. We'll see. Visage has been pretty good. So they increased the mana cost, familiar attack range increase, which is interesting why they would do that. Stun uh, radius increase as well, which is interesting why they would do this. And then bonus attack damage decreased. So they did decrease the attack damage, but they buffed the familiars uh, i don't know man i just it's so weird when they do this kind of stuff how and i don't know how i'm supposed to know whether this is actually going to make the hero more relevant or less relevant it almost seems like this is a buff overall to the hero i don't know i mean the talent is worse here but still void spirit so this is a big change um the shard is just worse overall now i think uh basically the uh aether remnant cooldown is decreased by two seconds and then it also doesn't get used up by uh creeps damages creeps once but does not dis uh, disappear which is pretty interesting i mean that's kind of cool so you can use it within a creep wave but the biggest problem is that not only is this a little bit worse i would say but the big thing is level 20 12 spell amp is gone so 
that I think was one of the biggest things with this hero that made it really good with its 12% spell amp, and now it's no longer there. I think this hero's kind of dead. They've been trying to nerf it over and over again. I think because of the way the lane works now, and you can't just farm the small camp, like this hero's always had trouble laning and just went and ganked once it hit six. Now you don't have the spell amp later. You're not going to scale as well. Your shard is different, which is okay, but I just don't think this, I think this hero might be dead. I'm going to be wrong though. They've been trying to kill the hero for a while because it's been so popular. Maybe it's still relevant. Warlock has slowly been gaining ground, getting a little bit better, but now they changed the uh, Shadow Word to be better. And now the Shard no longer gives movement speed. Um, the slow per second decreased. Now deals an increasing amount of damage up to 10 to maximum. Um, so it does damage now while the slow is decreased a little bit. The slow is not decreased a lot, but the fact that they're nerfing this hero, I mean, this hero has been so bad for so long, was finally getting some play, and now they decide to nerf the hero a little bit. Obviously, they're giving it some damage. That's fine. But they decreased the cast range. This is just absolutely ridiculous. Why nerf this hero when it's been bad for so long, guys? Why do that? Very annoying. Weaver, uh, Sakuchi, shard change. Um, or that the shard was added to Shikuchi now, and basically puts a mark on an enemy that you damage with Shikuchi, and then a Geminate attack will go to that target within 1200 range whenever you're attacking another target. So if you basically, you know, if you Shikuchi and you go over a bunch of heroes and they're all kind of clumped together and you attack them, they will be attacked, like all of them will be attacked, which is kind of cool, but I don't know that it's necessarily better than his other shard. I think it's actually worse than his other shard. And I don't really know why they changed it. I don't know who was asking for this or why they did this. Kind of weird. Wind, Ra uh, Wind Ranger. Uh, Seb has been playing the support like all the time still, even though it was nerfed before. So they nerfed it a little bit here. Um, they changed Wind Run. I think they tried to are trying to make this hero a little bit better as a core to give the scepter a little because they changed the scepter was good before, and I think it was then they nerfed it and changed it. But now um, it doesn't make. Wind run undispellable, but it grants invis invisibility that doesn't break while attacking and casting, which is pretty cool. Um, and we'll see how good that is. I mean, that can be pretty good. You're just like getting clicked down by an invis wind run wind ranger. That's pretty sick. Uh, so we'll see how good that is. But obviously, they're buffing the core version of this hero, trying to nerf the the support version. Winter wyvern pretty strong right now, so they decrease the strength. Flight duration decreased, and cast range decreased overall. This was also a pretty good core as well, so just making this hero worse overall. Witch Doctor, um, a support I love playing. I think it's really good. Uh, base attack range decreased, which is sad. Initial cast projectile speed increased, which is cool, but then the cast range decreased, which is kind of sad. Um, radius increased, which is good, and then heal decreased, which sucks, but it also deals damage to enemies as well. So that's pretty interesting. Death Ward now also has a 50% bonus accuracy mod modifier, so it goes through evasion, which is pretty awesome. And then duration for a Voodoo Switcheroo increased by a second. So there's some small nerfs here, but that's to compensate, I guess, for, which is, I hate when they do that, but uh, to compensate for the fact that you have some damage here on the Voodoo Restoration, and the projectile speed for cask is increased, which is pretty good, because obviously now it's bouncing back and forth a lot more, um, a lot quicker, so... It's a lot harder to dodge, which is pretty cool. I really like this hero as a support. I think it's absolutely, like, destroys in lane when you get uh, level 2, level 3, and you just start, like, running people down, especially with a good aggressive carry. This is pretty cool. I love this hero, and I love that they're buffing it. Uh, Wraith King has been okay for a long time, but kind of hasn't seen too much play recently, but they have uh, gave the hero a little bit more regen, and then they... Uh, decrease the skeleton duration from 60 to 40 seconds, which I don't know why they're nerfing that. That's kind of stupid to me. Um, but they did replace the 10 talent with, from attack speed to 25% skeleton duration um, and skeleton summon cooldown. So that can be pretty good. I don't know the full, uh, what is that, 25? Yeah, it's like, so it's still not as good, which is kind of weird. But you obviously spawn more skeletons, so I don't know. But I don't even know why they nerfed the hero in general when the hero just hasn't been played all that much. And then finally, we have Zeus here. So Zeus has been a really good mid laner and really good support. Probably one of the best heroes of the patch. They, um... They nerfed the cooldown for Heavenly Jump, they nerfed the slow uh, duration and percentage, and then they also reduced the damage from Static Field by 1%. But the 11, level 10 talent now makes Heavenly Jump back to what it was, if you get that instead of the movement speed, or instead of the mana regen, basically. Uh, you can either get health or the Heavenly Jump cooldown. Just overall, it's worse because of the slow and stuff, and then the a little bit less damage. But I still think this hero is pretty good. I think it was just really OP right now. And now it's just a little bit worse, but I still think it's really relevant. It's cool to see Zeus have a good spot in the meta. So I think this hero is still relevant, just not as OP as it once was. 
So that is the patch 7.32. Again, all around a really good patch. I think this is a great patch. Freshens, freshens up the game, gives some new, you know, dynamics to the map. Uh, no more, you know, small camp in mid lane, changes up mid lane, does some stuff with like the creeps, which is cool. That extra, like that flag bearing creep. The only problem I have with it is just like some stupid changes. Like I don't like sl the changes to Slark, Ricky, uh, Marana, Lifestealer. Just very, very weird changes overall to some of these heroes. But otherwise, I mean, I just think they need to stop letting the intern or the AI change those heroes. But otherwise, really good patch, really fun uh, game so far that I've played. Pretty cool. I'm excited to get into it, dig into it, and I'm excited for the TI qualifiers and TI in general. So, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all of those kinds of things. If you want to see more videos like this into the future, consider going to my Patreon and signing up uh, there for either coaching or to just support me in general. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.